Hey guys, welcome back to Conquering Kerbal Space Program, where we are on a mission in career mode to put a self-sufficient and fully effective base of operations on every single planet. And we have a long, long way to go. Um, I have, in the last video, uh, my recording actually cut a little bit too early there. Uh, I wasn't quite done with the plane when, when the video cut. I must have bumped the key that records um, by accident, and uh, it's just stopped recording without me knowing. So I've moved that key. It's, that shouldn't happen again. Uh, however, I want to show you what I've already built because I, I did finish it. So it's right here on the runway, the first plane. And let's go ahead and hit fly, and I'll take take a look, and I'll give you a tour of the plane. Here we go on the runway. Let's go ahead and activate the brakes. Okay, there we go. So this is our first plane. Again, nothing special. It's pretty it's pretty simple. Uh, we've got the cockpit here, of course. I don't know exactly what you remember seeing, but I added some scientific experiments to the front, and it's still moving. See it moving? I don't know. Graphics, man. Uh, we also have the mystery goo experiment at the top, which is something new you haven't seen me use yet. You haven't seen that yet. And also an antenna here so we can transmit science. And then we have four engines on the, on the wings. We have two here and two here with air intakes and the little puny Juno engines. I was going to make this plane a lot differently. I'm used to having more science. And um, yeah, it's... Uh, it didn't really turn out the way I needed it to because I don't I only have this one engine so I just put this puny little engine on the back and also I needed four of them on the side but this thing can fly it can fly it can fly really well uh, at least it should be able to because it's got a lot of power now because of the five engines um, and then there's yeah landing gear and we're ready to go so our pilot today is Jebediah Kerman who looks a lot different in my playthrough than he will anyone else's playthrough because um, Jebediah has, actually, let's try this. Hello. Yeah, that's Jebediah. He's got a badass looking mustache going on. Uh, because I have a couple of mods that replace the textures and a couple of mods that replace the looks of Kerbins, or Kerbals. So, um, yeah, it makes it a little more diverse so we don't get the same look over and over again. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so let's see how this thing flies, right? So we're gonna take and activate SAS because we have a pilot. And anyone, who, anytime you have a pilot, you have access to SAS. Uh, this is, uh, that's basically stability. Okay, so let's go ahead and boost up the engines or start the engines. And I'll turn the, the power on them all the way down. Because if you've ever played Kerbal Space Program before, you know that this runway, when it's dirt, is terrible to take off from it is just you just don't do it so what we're gonna do kind of cheat it a little bit we're gonna kind of taxi our way over here and kind of fall down this little hill and get into the grassy area oop, need a little more power to get over this hill there we go we're gonna get into this grassy area and uh, yeah then we will turn, whoa, hello. We will turn, and up we go. We'll take off from the flat grass, because it just works better than the runway. It works a lot better than the runway. Okay, so here we go. We have to take it up nice and easy, don't want to bump my engines, and we are up and away. Again, not the best plane in the world, but it flies, and that's the important thing. Uh, we can get some science. I shouldn't have done that. I should have done these two while I was on the runway, but we'll have plenty of time for that later. Mystery goo, however, we can still do if we want to. So we'll open that up. And we have... Hmm, no. So this illustrates a difference, right? When you recover the scientific experiments, you actually get to keep more of it. If I transmit the data from this, I only get a portion. And I get about 30%. So I'm going to want to keep this experiment, and I'm going to want to return safely to the KSC so that I can get this experiment and, um, and keep it, obviously. So we'll just kind of bend ourselves over a little bit. It's a little touchy. It's got a lot of, it's really, really, uh, really, really sensitive. It has a lot of control uh, to this thing, this little first little plane of ours. 
Let's get ourselves turned around. There we go. Just kill the engine a little bit. Kind of come in for a landing really quick. I just wanted to show you the plane. Also, we can do a crew report because we have an actual Kerbin with us now, so we can do a crew report. That's worth science as well, and since I get 100% for that for transmission, I'll just do it. Alright, cool. So, I'm way off course now. Let's get ourselves a little bit more acceleration here. Pull up a little bit, kill our speed. Kill our speed, and yes, I'm gonna take off in the grass and land in the grass, don't. When the runway is this dirt one, it's so bumpy. It's so, like, there's so many hills and bumps and stuff. It's just, it's just stupid don't, to try that, so. Landing will be a bit tricky with this craft. It's not really, uh oh, uh oh, no. Survive, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, landing with a plane with that plane is actually really difficult. Um, I tried to fly it. I tried to fly it one more time, or I tried to fly it one time before, um, uh, before recording the video, and I crashed on landing there too. Uh, but the cockpit is resilient, and Cur uh, Jebediah survives, and we can actually do. A temperature log from right here in the grass so we'll get some science there we're gonna keep that because I don't have an antenna anymore I can't transmit uh, it looks like we lost our pressure barometer unless the no I can't do anything there okay so I'm gonna do a crew report and we'll grab some science there it's worth yep yeah, 1.5 awesome and then I think I'm gonna do an EVA and oh the hatch is obstructed oh the hatch is on the other side of the plane can't quite get out okay well that's it then so <laughs> cover the vessel yeah not the best thing in the world there uh we did get uh 8.9 science from that so that's good from the recovery we have 37.6 science now so is there anything i can buy with that no there's not so we can do if as long as i can actually build a plane that can land which I'm, i'll do off off camera but um, as long as I build a plane that can land, we can do all of these focused observational surveys as well. Um, so that's pretty good. Since I have 203,000 though, um, I think I might upgrade mission control. I like having a lot of contracts, I really do, but I can't upgrade it because of this. 203 isn't enough to upgrade much of anything except the tracking station. So. I want patch conics, but I don't need it right now. Let's build something for orbit. How's that sound? Build something for orbit. Let's do it. Okay, so we are going to orbit the planet, and I think I'm gonna do this with, see, realistically, I probably should try doing this with a probe because I think that's more realistic, but I do have command pods available now, so why not do it with a command pod? So here is the command pod. This is what, um, well, actually, why not do it with a command pod? Probably because, do I have, I do have a heat shield. Okay, we have a heat shield, we have a command pod, that's all I need for re-entry because I also have parachutes. Very cool. MK-16 parachute on the top. So this is our, this is what we're gonna be returning with, basically. It's a command pod that's gonna hold uh, one Kerbin, or one Kerbal. In this case, it's Jebediah, our pilot. And then it has a parachute, which will open because we need to save his life, and a heat shield, which will protect us from the forces of reentry because, again, we want to save his life. So when you're building a craft that has a Kerbin in it or a Kerbal in it, I'm going to keep mixing those up, I know it. Um, when you're building something that has a Kerbal in it, you have to accommodate for his, his life, essentially. You have to save his life. So let's build a rocket. First, I'm going to get a decoupler. Actually, do I have the mod that lets me? Yes, I do. So I can actually decouple without a decoupler here because there's a mod that adds a decoupler functionality into a heat shield because I just got tired of having to like do this. Well, not that, not with that one, but having to do that 
it's just weird. Like there's a shroud and it's a coupler. It's like, why? Why not just have this detach it? So I think we have that now. I'm gonna test that out, we'll see. Uh, so assuming that we can decouple directly from this, let's put some fuel on this bad boy. Mm, now that looks weird. I can't tell if it's, I don't, that's gonna be weird. Maybe I'll test this off camera. I don't want, I want to make sure we have his life. I want to make sure he survives. So I'll do it the old way for now, just to make sure. And we'll try, I'll try and decouple from this and we'll see what happens, but um, I don't want to do it wrong. Okay, so this is our little fuel tank here and we need to get to orbit. Uh, I'm thinking I want to use a swivel on this stage and then we're gonna go with, uh, let's see, another decoupler here. And then we'll follow this up with, let's, let's move this up a bit. We need to go a little higher with this. Let's follow this up with um, another couple of tanks for some more fuel with a Reliant engine. So I think this will be our primary trying to control this and get into orbit thing. And then at the very end, uh, we'll have this little part here, which will have uh, at least as much Delta V as we can have. And actually, what's the fuel efficiency for in a vacuum? This one has 200, uh, that's, that's thrust. I want ISP. This has 320 in a vacuum and this has 300. So yeah, we want the swivel here. Okay. So we're gonna to wanna to be able to control this as well, but when we have a reaction wheel, we're gonna need another reaction wheel. So let's grab, ooh, all it's giving me is the small one. I haven't unlocked the large one yet. And I haven't unlocked, well this has RCS thrusters on it. This is a different part. I don't know how to, I don't know how to work that part yet. Yeah, okay, so let's go ahead and play around with this. I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this design and we'll just do like a time-lapse thing because I don't wanna waste your time with that. So we'll just do it right now. I wish wish these things would line up like they're supposed to. There we go, about like that. This is just gonna give me just a tiny bit of extra control. So how this has worked or how this is built, we have the command pod here, which is gonna have Jebediah Kerman. We have our parachute, of course, our two mystery goo experiments. I also have an antenna here just in case I decide I want to transmit things in the event that I something goes wrong and I'm like, I gotta save the science. There we go. Um, down here as we go, we've got, we've got one fuel tank with uh, a bunch of fuel in it, uh, full of liquid fuel and oxidizer for the swivel engine. Then we decouple that. We have two more fuel tanks with a Reliant engine here. And we have these four boosters solid fuel boosters, which are gonna lift us up and get us a pretty good start into the uh, out of the atmosphere. There's wings, of course, to help me with controls. And these boosters, once they run out of fuel, we will decouple them with these radial decouplers here, and we'll just get them out of our way and uh, keep going up and up. And that's pretty much it, that's the, that's the craft. I'm not sure what I'm gonna name this. I'm gonna name, I'll just call it First Rocket for now. I'm gonna save this model if it works. <laughs> Haven't tested it, don't know if it works yet. Uh, but we're gonna save that craft in case it does work. Now over here we have the staging on the right side. So first we fire these, which is good. Then we decouple them, then fire this engine. Then we decouple that when it's empty, we fire this engine. Then we decouple here. Okay, we do have a decouple stage on that, right on that. Okay, good, Never mind. So what I can do then, is I don't need this decoupler. Because it looks like there's a decouple stage right there. Yeah, okay, good. So this this stage will decouple that, and then we'll just come in to the atmosphere uh, with this as our craft, and we'll uh, land and parachute, and be, Jebediah will hopefully make it back safe. <laughs> hopefully make it back safe. Uh, active contracts, what can we do in this mission? Orbit Kerbit is what we're gonna try and do here. Hopefully I get into orbit. Um, test the Rocco Max decoupler on a suborbital trajectory over Kerbin. This is a big decoupler uh, and we're not gonna get this high, so I'm not worried about that. Haul the stack 
separator into an escape trajectory. We can't do that. Test this stack decoupler splashed down. Okay. That's something we might be able to do um, if we land in water. So what I could do, this is, what. what is the stack decoupler? It's this one, TR, no, it's FTP DS1. I don't have that one. Oh, here it is. It's up here. It's, okay, so it's this big one here. Okay, well, let's try. Let's see what this see what this does. We'll put this decoupler here and then put the uh, like that. So it looks a little weird, but I want to haul this. I want to haul this with us so that we can test it while we're splashed down. Um, that's the idea, anyway. So that's how we're going to do it. So this heat shield will be on below this. You know, this is a really easy thing though. I can always just do this really quickly. And it's not lining up really well with our craft. You can see the, you can see this little gap right here. I'm not sure how that will affect us flying. Mm, I don't want anything to happen to have us lose the heat shield. So we'll do that another time. So right, basically the goal here is to do, the goal here is to get into orbit, but we're gonna be doing some sciencey stuff while we're in orbit too. So uh, hope, actually that's a hopefully, hang on one second. Let's, let's save the craft, go back to, yeah, it's this one here. So we have to be able to do, Kerbals can perform, Kerbals can disembark only on Kerbin. I need an upgrade to this building in order to let us do EVAs in space. So let's go ahead and do that. We have an upgrade to that building now. And now I should be able to do what I wanna do. So let's go back to the vehicle assembly building. So this is our craft. We should be ready to go. All our staging is set and ready to rock. And let's do it, let's launch. All right, cool. You can hear, <laughs> you can hear a sort of mission control, if you will, speaking. Uh, this is from the Chatterer mod, which basically, if you have Kerbals with you on the mission, they will talk over the radio like real astronauts and stuff do, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we are ready to go. I have my display up here. We have our SAS on, and let's just hope we can do this uh, really, really well. Um, Am I gonna test this on the launch pad? No, I'll do that in the next. I'll do that in the next mission when I do that decoupler and sp splash down. So, all right, three, two, one, and up we go. The boosters will carry us uh, a good portion of the way. I've limited their thrust in hopes that it won't make us go a little bit too. F hopes that we don't go too fast. However, I may have limited it too much. And now we might be going too slow. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. When we get up to about 10,000 meters, I'm gonna start a gravity turn. This is basically, just basically tilt yourself down a little bit or tilt yourself over a little bit and head east to get yourself into orbit. Uh, I do not have Ferrum Aerospace Research installed yet for those of you who play this game with mods and are wondering. I don't have FAR installed yet. Um, there are some incompatibilities regarding some mods uh, for that 1.1. FAR itself is compatible, but other things that work with FAR are not, so I'm waiting until the other things are before I engage with it. Right, so let's give ourselves a quick little turn. Just a little one. Oh, come on, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Uh-oh, can't quite turn. Oh. All right, let's go ahead and jettison those. I can turn a little easier now. All right, and up we go. Oh man, it's, this thing's a pig. It does not want to turn. No, get over. <laughs> well, we may not get to orbit. If I can't turn this thing, we may not, we may not get to orbit. I'm hoping it turns a little easier soon. I've got a gimbal on the engine, plus a reaction wheel in the command pod, but it is a fairly long craft, so it's questionable as to whether or not this is gonna work. Let's go ahead and observe the mystery goo. And we're gonna hang on to that. There we go. Finally getting ourselves over. We got a long ways to go though. Come on. We gotta get to about, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, about 2400 meters per second in our orbital path here. So, got quite a long ways to go. But once we get into space, 
Um, actually, I can probably start killing this engine just a little bit. Let's see where we are. Okay, we are m much high enough for sure. We are definitely high enough. Now, I can't do maneuver nodes yet because I haven't upgraded my tracking station. So I'm just going to have to eyeball this and hope that I can get into orbit without that. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> we are now in space, which is great. So let's go ahead and tilt ourselves a little bit and fire this engine. And we're, basically, I want to point it right at the horizon right about now. We're going into the night. Now, the cool thing about going with a Kerbin, uh, with a Kerbal, God, I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, the cool thing about going with a Kerbal is that we do not need constant access to the KSC. So you'll notice we don't have a connection, but we can still control our craft because we have a person in the craft. We don't need the KSC to control the craft. So that's the positive note for that. Negative, of course, is we risk the lives of our men or women. Okay, so this engine's about to deplete. And we'll go ahead and get that, get rid of that. Let's see how our progress is. We're doing pretty well, uh, but we still need, we still have a little bit of ways to go here, so let's fire this engine. And away we go. Now this swivel is a little bit more fuel efficient than uh, the Reliant, and just a little bit more in a vacuum. However, there's a lot less fuel which also means there's less weight to push. So hopefully that works out for us. So I'm gonna stop the engine because we're actually still going up and I don't wanna go up. And let's take a look here. We're doing okay. For not having a maneuver node, we're doing fine, but we're getting a little high. So I'm gonna wait until we're closer to our apoapsis. The apoapsis is the uh, basically the highest point above the body that you're orbiting. So uh, after this point, we start falling again. And I'm gonna use the momentum of the fall to help push me around the planet a little bit more. So basically, I don't have to have as much delta V. Uh, delta V, and again, I'm, I, I keep reiterating little beginner type stuff because I'm not, I don't know how many people have played this game before. Uh, but delta V is essentially your um, the amount of change to your acceleration that you're able to uh, you're able to exert on your craft. Your change in velocity. So that's delta change V velocity. So uh, I have I have no idea how much delta V I have left in this because I'm not good at calculating that on the fly. Uh, if once I have Kerbal Engineer installed, uh, I definitely will have it, but I don't have Kerbal Engineer installed right now in terms of on this particular craft. Um, see, it's blanked out here. So once we start falling, I'll turn this engine back on and we'll basically use gravity to help us get into orbit. Oh yeah, and then we'll go to internal view and I can show you a bunch of other stuff too, but I wanna make sure that we, I'm gonna do the observed mystery goo as well here. Grab that science, 10 science for that. I can also do a crew report if I want to as well, which I can transmit if I want to, which I'm going to. If Whenever you can transmit, usually I say if you can transmit, you should transmit, but we're also using electric charge right now we don't have a whole lot of electric charge and I really don't want to use all the electric charge. So actually I'm going to put this antenna away because I don't want to use that electric charge. I don't have any solar panels on this. Okay, so we are falling now. So since we're falling, let's go ahead and fire this engine up a little bit. And we will use the gravity of the planet to help us around the rock. So let's just do that. And Cool. We are in orbit, ladies and gentlemen. Our apoapsis is 180 meters above the planet, 180,000 meters above the planet, 180 kilometers, and our periapsis is 80,000 meters. Uh, the the Kerbin's atmosphere is cut off at 70,000 meters. So uh, as long as we're over 70,000 meters at every point in our orbit, we won't slow down. We can keep orbiting, which means we are now orbiting the planet. So let's. We're on the dark side of the planet now, so you can't hardly see anything. So let's go ahead and get on the light side. We'll use time acceleration to get on the light side of the planet. And we did over-engineer this just a little bit. There's more delta V than we needed, but it's always better to have more than you need than it is to have not enough. 
Okay, so here we are. We're orbiting the planet. Uh, let's get a little bit, a little bit more into the day. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we can do an EVA if I want to. Let's just rotate this on its side. I like to do it when the door on its side. That's, I, I think it's easier doing it that way. So we're going to do an EVA. So we are on the outside, and you can see that his outfit is a little pink. This is another mod that color coats, um, color coats Kerbins based on their role that they play. So I'm, I'm going to change these colors because I just installed this mod before starting this video. Um, I'm going to change the colors. Again, all the mods I have are link in the description below. Um, uh, but I haven't done that yet. So right now, <laughs> right now, pilots are pink with a little rocket ship on the back of their helmet. But this is Jeb, and he is... Let's actually look this way, Jeb. There we go. Yeah, he's happy. And the graphics are making his mouth go all over the place. So, Okay, so let's do an EVA report, which is worth a lot of science. Eight science, cool, keep that. Let's come up. And just to make sure because on our re-entry, these might fall off or something. So just to make sure, we're going to grab this, collect this data out of this, and we're going to bring it on board with us inside our command capsule. Do the same thing with this one here. There we go. And then we're just going to come on back in. Yep. Simple. Simple little EVA report, simple EVA operation there, no big deal. Okay, so I think we're probably ready to come back to Kerbin now. Um, we've been out in space long enough, done our thing. We got our orbit Kerbin goal achieved, which is good, which gave us some more money, I think. Yep, we're back over 206,000 now, which is good. And looks like we only have 20 minutes Oh, wait, no, is that it? Hab. Oh, okay. No, no. We have how much supplies do we have here? Uh, I, this is I'm not used to this life support mod. I'm used to the other ones that I was using, but TAC life support's not compatible. I think this is how much supplies we've used, um, and this is how much we have left. Oh, wow. So we have 30 days of supplies in here that comes with the command pod. So that's, that's a lot. It's way more than we needed, but all right. I guess we're, we're giving, making sure he's prepared for a situation where he, um, you know, maybe something went wrong and he's stuck in space for a month. Uh, Got to make sure he can survive until we can get up there and save him, right? All right? So let's turn towards the retrograde for our orbit, and we're just going to go slower to slow our descent. And I think I want to come in during the daytime, so. Let's take a look here. Yeah, I could come in during the daytime if I did it right now. So let's bump our, let's bump this up a little bit here. There we go. And we're burning backwards to slow ourselves down so that we come back into the planet. And it looks like I'm actually gonna come in during the nighttime, which is a shame. I wanted to come in during the day. Maybe if I burn just a little bit longer, this is not a good angle to come in on, by the way. Not the best angle in the world, um, but I think it'll be all right. So we are on approach now, or we are on a path towards re-entry right now. So now that I have that all done, I could leave this tank on just to slow me down later, a little bit more later, but I think I'm gonna let the heat shield do its thing because I'd rather the heat shield do its thing than risk this blowing up and blowing up the rest of the craft. So we're just going to detach. There we go. And I like that the heat shield is capable of de detaching now. I like that. And this is it. So we are ready to go. Uh, I still got the reaction wheel and the power and all that stuff. And uh, as long as I don't run out of power, I can still, you know, I can still control this. So. We are good to go. So let's do a little bit of time acceleration here. You can see the rest of our craft slowly floating away. Do a little bit of time acceleration. Coming back 
down. And escape, stop. Make sure we are flipped around the right way here. And I want to face retrograde to our orbit. So we are facing directly into our orbit right now, which is gonna help me. Let's do surface instead, actually. All right, so here we go. We're gonna enter the atmosphere. There's some little bit of graphical bugs happening here with regards to 1.1. Again, sorry about that. Nothing I can do about it right now. So we're falling down pretty fast. We're traveling at over 2100 meters per second and um, accelerating. So we're gonna be going very fast. And this is usually, I think, where I probably should have turned the rocket on and slowed myself down a bit more. But I wanted to see and make sure that the heat shield and stuff is gonna do its thing because I haven't done a re-entry with 1.1 yet. So there we go. Maybe I'll burn up and crash and die and I'll have to like, you know, deal with not having Jebediah for the rest of my playthrough, which is going to be a really big pain in the ass. Heat shield's getting a little, little warm. No, just a little bit warm. Yep. But that's what it's for. That is what it's for. And we got the science out of these mystery goos just in case the heat hits them and they, you know, explode and they go away because they are getting a little hot too. Um, so hopefully that, if these do decide to blow up, Hopefully they don't also take out my parachute, because that would pretty much be game over for Jebediah. I don't have any backup parachutes, but the hope is that the heat shield will do its thing. So here we go. And we're finally starting to slow down at 38,000 meters. Coming in a little steep, I think. Just a tad bit steep, but I think we'll be all right. As long as we're not like landing in the mountains, I think we'll be fine. Using up some of that ablator, that's good. There's the other parts of our ship up there. Our first rocket part, kind of doing its thing, coming in on its own. Probably will explode, although I'm not sure the game will calculate its explosion like it should. It should have exploded already, I would think, but I'm not sure it'll calculate its explosion if it's not within my eyesight, I'm not sure. Okay, we're really slowing down now, that's good. And we're coming in. Yep, oh, there it goes. So now it exploded. That's good. Okay, still slowing down. We are up near land, but it's not high like mountains, it doesn't look like so. All right, we are now under 400 meters per second, so we could open our parachute now if we wanted to. I'm gonna let it fall just a little bit longer just to get over these mountains here, or get away from these mountains, and let's pop the chute. There's the parachute. So it'll open partway to slow me down a little bit until it gets down to about, I think it's a thousand meters and then it will open all the way. Oh yeah, textbook landing there, man. Piece of cake. All those graphical problems. Graphical problems, by the way, are caused by Scatterer. Um, Scatterer is an amazing mod that makes this view right here with this amazing sun and all this stuff, that's what makes this possible. Otherwise, this game would not look like that. But uh, for 1.1, it's a bit of a problem with graphics there as a result, unfortunately. All right, so down we come. Not sure where we are, to be honest with you. It's like, the, like a tundra of some kind. Coming down, touchdown. There we go. 
Okay. So we are safe and sound now. Let's do another crew report. Uh, ooh, no, I don't want to replace it. But I do need another. I do want another EVA. Let's do another EVA. And, again, graphical problems. Awesome. Uh, let's take data and then store the experiments. We're going to do another EVA report here. Keep that data. And then we'll board back in the craft. Uh, that was flying high over the desert. Ooh, that was flying high over the desert. Interesting. So I'm off the ground, so it says that I'm flying. Okay. Well, let's take the data. We'll put the data back in. And then we'll come down. And now we're on the ground. Uh, let go. How do I do that? There we go. On the ground now. Let's plant a flag. Tell everyone we landed here. Oh yeah, that's us. Graphical problems and all. I might have to delete Scatterer. This is actually a little bit annoying. Um, plaque text says, uh, let's just say desert, or first landing from orbit. Uh, actually, let's do it this way. Desert landing one. First landing from orbit. That's the flag. We'll do an EVA report while standing on the ground. We get another 2.4 science. And now I can go back into the craft. And may I knock my flag over. Awesome. Whatever. It's cool. Back in the craft and let's recover it. So we got 103 science. Now we got 50 science on that mission, which is great. We also got 2,600 funds back from the recovery. And Jebediah Kerman has gained experience. He's now level one. So all my crew members can gain experience up to five stars, which basically takes a lot to get there. Um, and they gain experience and they become more capable with that experience as time goes on. So there you go. We got into orbit. We got 103 science. Let's see what we can unlock now. Uh, probably want basic science to get this and life support stuff, although 30 days of life support was already available, but the additional science is going to be pretty critical. So let's grab that. Uh, storage tech, recycling. Ooh, okay. Don't know what that is. Exploration, we've got a Bud's Beer. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see, flight control, this gives us mech jab units, that's cool. Not sure I'm ready for mech jab yet. Probably not gonna use it much anyway. Um, I mean, I'll use mech jab's functions for controlling the vessel, but not for doing like maneuvers and stuff. Or maybe I'll do it the other way. Maybe I, I won't do it for control, but I'll have it execute maneuvers for me. Maybe I'll do it that way, don't know. Uh, radio control mount for MRS, interesting. Aviation, we've got some, a Banshee lift fan. We've got some turbo props from Fire Spitter. That's cool. Air brakes. There's the Weasley turbo fan engine. That's the one I thought I was gonna have. So this here will let me build the plane I was gonna build before. Uh, so I might want to get that. It's 45 science. I think I probably do want to get that. It's more important than flight control. Although, having monopropellant is pretty good. But I think the aviation is going to be more helpful for me in the short term. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Oh, and it unlocked landing. So we'll finally get access to landing legs. Yep, L1 landing struts. That's good. A whole bunch of different types of landing gear. Very cool. Okay, guys. Well, that's this episode. Thanks for watching. It's been cool. We have a bunch of contracts left to get now if we want to. But I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to do some more science around the base. Each one of these buildings is actually a different biome. Um, it, it's a different, uh, a different area classified by the planet. Or classified by the game, anyway, for this planet. Um, and each one of these can have science. Uh, experiments done on them individually for science, uh, for progress in science. So I can do 
an EVA report and a temperature scan and a pressure scan and all that stuff from this area, but I can also do it from here and get different results apparently. Uh, so I'll get more science there. Same thing with here, same thing with here and all these different buildings. So I'm probably gonna go and build like a small little buggy and just collect science from all of these things while uh, like off camera. And that will give me a bunch of science so that I can unlock some new tech later and do some more contracts later. So I'll do that. And uh, yeah, see you next time.